the merits of Juma prayer. Know, O oh dear reader, that Juma day is a holy day. God honored Islam therewith and gave glory to the Muslims. God says when there is azan for prayer on Juma day, run towards the remembrance of God and give up buying and selling. The Prophet said, God has made compulsory on you on this day of mine and and in this place of mine. The Prophet said, if a man loses three Jumas without any excuse, God puts a seal in his mind. The other narration said, he throws Islam on his back. The Prophet said, Jibreel came to me with a clean mirror in his hand and said, this is Juma. God made it obligatory on you so that it may be a festival for you and after you for your followers. I said, what good there is in it? He said, you have got an auspicious time in it. If a man seeks anything from God at this time, God has promised that he will give it to him. If he is deprived of that, many additional things will be given to him in that connection. If any man wants to save himself from, that e from any evil on that day, God saves him from a greater calamity or like calamity which has been decided and decreed on him. Juma day is the best day to us and we shall call it on the day of resurrection as a day of grace. I asked him, what object is there in calling it a day of grace? He said, your God has made a valley of paradise of white musk. When Juma day comes, God descends on his throne in Ihyin and sheds his luster and they look on towards his august face. The Prophet said the sun rose for the first time on the best Juma. Hazrat Adam was created on that day. He entered paradise on that day. He was thrown into this world on that day and his penance was accepted on that day. He died on this day and the day of resurrection will take on his day. This day is a day of blessing of God. The heavens and the angels have given names to this day. There is hadith that God will release 600,000 men from hell on this day. The Prophet said, when the Juma day is safe, it is, con it is when a Juma day is safe, all the days of the week remain safe. He said if a man dies on the Juma day or night, the rewards of one martyrdom are written for him and the punishment of the grave is forgiven. Conditions of Juma prayer. Ten rules should be observed on the Juma day. One, it is better to prepare for the Juma day from Thursday. After Asr of Thursday, turn your attention to invocation, seek forgiveness and tasbih, as the merits of this time are equal to that of the, unauspic of the auspicious unknown time of Friday. Number two, make your clothes clean on this day you sent. Keep your mind free from anxieties that may rise up in the free mind on Friday morning. Try to fast on this day as there is great merit in it. Pass Thursday night by reading the Quran and praying. The Prophet said, God shows mercy to the man who rises in the morning and awakes others, takes a bath and causes the bath of others. Number three, take a bath in the morning of Friday. The Prophet said, it is obligatory on every mature man to take a bath on Friday. He said, let one who attends Juma take bath. He said, let one female or male who attends Juma prayer take bath. Number four, it is commendable to take recourse to beauty on this day, to take a fine dress to be pure and to use a scent. Regarding purity, clean your teeth, cut your hair, sl slip your moustache and do everything necessary for purity. Hazrat Ibn Mas'ud said, if a man manicures his nails on Juma day, God takes out disease from him and gives him a cure therein. Regarding dress, Wear a white dress as it is dear to God. To use a turban is commendable, the Prophet said. God and his angels bless those who wear a turban on Juma day. Number five, it is commendable to go to Congressional Mosque in the morning. 
The Prophet said, He who goes to Jummah in the early part gets the reward of a sacrifice of a camel, when he goes in the second time gets the reward of a sacrifice of a cow, when he goes to the third time he gets the reward of a sacrifice of a goat, when he goes to the fourth time he gets the reward of a sacrifice of a cock, and he goes in the fifth stage he gets the reward of a charity of an egg. When the Imam gets up for khutbah, the record is folded up and the pen is lifted up. The angels gather together, wear the pulpit and hear the zikr of God. The Prophet said, There are three things. If the people had known what good there is therein, they would have come to search for it like a camel. Azan, the first row, and going to the Congressional Mosque at dawn. In the first century, the pathway became full of men in the early hours up to dawn. The Prophet used to come out with light and the mosque used to be filled with men like the day of Eid. It became obsolete afterwards. It is said that the innovation of giving up the practice of going to the mosque at dawn first entered Islam. It is a matter of regret that the Jews and Christians go to their synagogues and churches at dawn on Saturday and Sunday respectively and the worldly people go to the markets to buy and sell at dawn but those who seek the next, next world cannot go to the mosque at dawn. Number 6. and Ranks of entering a mosque Nobody should go to the first row of the mosque by crossing the necks of men. The Prophet said on the day of resurrection such a man will be made a bridge and people will go over him. Once when the Prophet was reciting the khutbah, he noticed a man that was advancing towards the first row after crossing the necks of men. After finishing the prayer, the Prophet called him and said, O oh, such and such person, what prevented you to pray Juma with me today? He said, O oh, Prophet of God, I prayed with you. The Prophet said, have I not found you cross over the necks of men? He hinted that by this action his prayer was void. In another narration the Prophet said to him, What prevented you to pray with me? He said, O Prophet of God, have you not seen me? The Prophet of God said, I have seen you coming late and giving trouble to the people. In other words, you have delayed to come at dawn and you have given trouble to those people who are present. Number 7. Don't go to the mosque by the front of praying man, keep wall or pillar or stick in front of him when praying so that the people may not pass in front of you. The Prophet said, his waiting for 40 years is better than his going in the front of men while praying. The Prophet said, it is better for any man to be powdered to earth to be blown off by air like a refugee than to cross the front of a praying man. Number 8. Try to take a seat in the first row. There is a hadith. If a man takes a bath, tells another to take a bath. If a man rises early and makes another awake early and goes near the Imam and hears the sins which he has committed between the two Jummahs, an additional three days become expiration for him. Number 9. The prayer should be stopped at a time when the Imam gets upon the pulpit. The Prophet said, If a man says to another at the time when the Imam delivers address, Be silent, he holds useless talk. The Juma of one who holds useless talk is not performed. Number 10. Follow the Imam in Juma. When the Juma is finished, recite before the talk of chapters Alhamdulillah seven times, Ikhlas seven times, Falak seven times, Anna seven times. Certain sage said, He who does this remains safe up to the next Jummah from the devil. Good deeds on the day of Jummah. Number one, be present at the assembly of learning at dawn or after prayer. There is a hadith that to remain present in an assembly of learning is better than optional prayers of 1000 rakats. Number two, to meditate well for the auspicious moment. There is in a well known hadith that there is a time on the day of Jummah in which a Muslim is granted whatever he seeks. There is another hadith that says, He who prays does not lose it. There is a difference of opinion about this auspicious time. Some say that it is the time of sunrise, some say that it is afternoon, some say that it is the time of azan. 
Some say that it is when the Imam gets upon the pulpit and begins his address. Some say that it is the last time of Asr prayer. Some say that it is spread across the day like the blessed night. So one has to seek it and should remain in meditation throughout the entire day. Some say that it is intermingled with every time of Juma day. There is this is the correct view. If this is supported by the following hadiths, there is a day amongst your among your days when your Lord gives out breath. Be prepared on that day. This is the day of Juma among the days. Number three, it is commendable to recite Durood this time on the Prophet, that is the Salawat on the Prophet. The Prophet said that if a man sends Salawat on me 80 times on the day of Juma, God forgives his minor sins for 80 years. He said, O Prophet of God, he was asked, O Prophet of God, what is the Salawat on you? He said, You should say, O God, bless Muhammad, thy servant your prophet and your apostle, the illiterate prophet. Number four, recite the Quran more in this day, especially chapter Kahf. The prophet said if a man recites the Surah Kahf on the Juma day or night, he is given such a light which is visible from Makkah and his sins are forgiven up to the next Juma and the merits of three days in addition are given to him and 70,000 angels bless him till dawn. He is saved from diseases, the pains of stomach, tuberculosis and the trials of the Jal. Number 5. It is commendable to recite Salawat at the time of entering the mosque and not to sit till one prays four rakats reciting therein ikhlas 50 times in each rakat. The Prophet said he who prays such will not die till he is shown his place in paradise. Number six, it is commendable to give charity on Juma day. The merits are increased many fold. Number seven, keep yourself engaged in divine service for the whole Juma day after giving up worldly duties. Jazakallah khair wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.